Hi, I'm Bonnie Furlong, and today I'm going to talk about and demonstrate um, gas exchange, and we'll talk a little bit too about also about gas transport. Um, first, to understand gas exchange, we have to know what diffusion is. And diffusion is the movement of molecules from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration. Um, and first, we're going to talk about gas exchange between the alveoli and the capillaries. The capillaries carry the deox or have deoxygenated blood from the heart. The alveoli is the only site of gas exchange between the atmosphere and the blood. So right over here is the drawing here um, to demonstrate gas exchange. Here's the alveolar sac and here's the capillary and the red blood cell. Um, so, so this is why it's important to understand to understand diffusion. And both of these, the respiratory membrane and the capillary the, um, is, are made of simple squamous endothelium. So that way diffusion can happen quite easily across, across the membranes. Um, so the, ox the oxygen is in high concentration in the alveolar and when you, it's from when you inhale. And it's gonna be picked up, the oxygen's gonna be picked up from the red blood cell that's deficient in the oxygen. Then the red blood cell is higher in carbon dioxide and the, and the alveolar is low in carbon dioxide. So naturally the diffusion will happen from a place of high concentration to the place of lower concentration. Blood from the pulmonary arteries, the arterioles, arterioles, capillaries, and the capillaries that carry blood away from the heart to the lung is going to be high in carbon dioxide and low in oxygen. And the alveolar sac is gonna be high in oxygen and low in carbon dioxide. So you can understand how this exchange happens with diffusion going from high concentration to low and then from high concentration carbon dioxide here to low concentration in the alveolar. So <clears throat> it diffuses through the respiratory membrane and then it's picked up by the hemoglobin. Then it's gonna uh, go throughout the body and it's gonna offload the oxygen into the tissue. So we'll flip over to this one. So we can see this diagram. This is a uh, gas transport, and this shows more of this systemic gas exchange, the gas um, exchange that happens throughout the body. So <clears throat> the tissue is oxygen deficient because it burns the oxygen for fuel. So that's where you see diffusion, diffusion occurring again. When the o um, oxygen or the <laughs> Keep saying oh, goes from the blood to the tissue. And then the tissue has a higher concentration of carbon dioxide levels. So the carbon dioxide diffuses into the blood where there's lower carbon dioxide levels. Most oxygen is carried in the blood bound to hemoglobin, to the hemoglobin of the red blood cells. The rest is dissolved and carried through the plasma. Um, and hemoglobin, uh, the globin is a polypeptide or a protein, and oxygen bonds to the heme or the hem and can carry up to four molecules. Oxygen in the red blood cell attaches to the hemoglobin, and oxygen passes through the capillary, through the red blood cell, or through the red blood cell, through the capillary, into the tissue, which the tissue then uses the oxygen for fuel. Tissue cells need to offload the carbon dioxide that they produce as a byproduct or a consequence of ATP. So the ATP that's produced in the mitochondria uh, also has the consequence or the byproduct uh, production of carbon dioxide. So it has to offload that into, into the, blood, uh, the red blood cell. So tissue cells need the oxygen for fuel and they need to offload the carbon dioxide. Some dissolves in the water outside of the cell but most goes into the cell, into the water and in, into the cell. Um, then that's where carbon dioxide uh, c combines with H2O. They meet up in the red blood cell and the two of them form um, the carbon carbonic acid. The, carbi the carbionic acid then dissociates into bicarbonic, a bicarbonic ion, or bicarbonic ions. The bicarbonic ion then at that point it can travel out it can travel into the plasma <clears throat> when carbon is released from the tissue it can bind the another way so here so that's how most most of the trans the tra cell 
Ugh. Most of the gas transport, most of the gas transport is transported through the bicarbonate ion. And then next, um, it can be transported also by the hemoglobin, and it doesn't interfere with the oxygen because the oxygen binds to the, binds to the hem and the carbon dioxide binds to the globin. So bicarbonate, uh, so then after this process is done, bicarbonic ion, ions come back into the red blood cell, break, go back into the carbon, uh, back into the carbonic acid. They're turned back into gas, into the alveolar sac, and then that carbon dioxide is exhaled through the lungs.